Alright, so you're sick of where you live and finally have the means to pick anywhere else in the world to live. Okay, okay, more realistically, you're just dreaming like me of where in the world you could live that's peaceful and safe and makes you happy to be alive. Unless, of course, you're just waiting to get off this planet and be one of the first to colonize Mars, which according to Elon should be, oh, right now. Well, I think he's a little behind schedule, so you'll have to settle for some place on Earth and I'll save planet destinations for another video. If you scour the web and other YouTube videos, you're going to find lots of lists showcasing the best countries to live in, but they are highly inaccurate and exclude some obvious and glaring issues like government oppression. No one wants to go to jail for speaking their mind. Oh wait. A judge can impose fines and even issue a house arrest warrant if they believe that there are grounds to suspect that someone will commit an offence. No thanks Canada, I came up with the most chill countries based on these studies here. Yeah, no one wants to read through all these reports, so I just took the highest ranking countries from each of these studies and came up with a list based on the best quality of life and the happiness and global peace indexes. So while America is busy opening up its border and preparing for a civil war in November and Trudeau's Canada is becoming more and more like the minority report, let's take a look at the 10 best countries in the world to live in. Number 10. Norway. You know, there's just something special about Norway that gets under your skin in the best way possible. But it's definitely not vitamin D from the sun. The nearly 5.5 million people that live here must clearly love the rain or cold or find contentment in something else. Sure, the fjords and northern lights are also a real treat for the eyes, but there's a coziness, a sense of togetherness that feels baked into their culture. I recently learned that one of their favorite words is dugnad, which means volunteering for the common good. Norwegians grow up with a mindset of helping each other out so they genuinely prioritize looking out for one another. You really get a sense of how laid back everyone is about needs being met and simple things like having a roof over their heads. Although it smells a little too much like communism for me. At the present, Norway has the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world valued at $1.4 trillion. At least the government is smarter with their money than the United States. It also contributes to one of the best welfare systems in the world. I mean, new parents can get up to a year of free money. Norway is also one of the few countries that boasts a literacy rate of 100% and their gross domestic product per capita is $52,192, which is a common measurement of economic health. So while the government control may be a bit much for some, a lot of people really do enjoy peace and happiness in this well-educated and profitable country. With a score of 0.966, Norway ranked second on the Human Development Index, indicating a high quality of life. Might be that crisp mountain air or that special brand of sensible Scandinavian thinking. Whatever their secret sauce, Norway's definitely got it figured out. Number 9. Austria Austria has not always been a pleasant place to live. Just ask anyone who lived here in the early to mid part of the 20th century. Austria was invaded by Hitler in 1938, but it went largely unopposed because the people thought it would be better for them and they agreed to the Anschluss, or joining of the Third Reich. For a while there, they weren't even an independent country until the Allies declared the Anschluss null and void and restored their independence from Germany. After they gained full sovereignty in 1955, however, they have in my opinion been one of the fastest growing countries in terms of peace and neutrality. They currently rank number 5 on the Global Peace Index, meaning crime and international conflicts among other criteria indicate that they are one of the most peaceful countries in the world. Austria has a GDP per capita of approximately 52,000, another strong indicator that the country is doing well financially. It may be a relatively small country, but it does boast a very strong economy and high living standards, typical of many people with strong ties to classical music. Oh yeah, did I forget to mention that Austria is a global center for classical music and has been home to famous composers like Mozart and Beethoven. It's this seamless blend of overall peace and solid economy that make this tiny nation simply enchanting. Number 8. Singapore You'd think that spreading out is what makes people happier and have a better quality of life, but not for the people in Singapore. As the second most densely populated country in the world, the nearly 6 million folks that live here are packed in like sardines, with 22,254 people per square mile. Yet they rank second highest on the quality of life charts and fourth on the happiness index. Founded as a British trading post in 1819, Singapore grew into a major port city but remained a British colony until after World War II. 
Their occupation by Japan fostered a sense of national identity and a desire for self-determination, which led to their independence in 1965, where they rapidly developed a strong economic plan and transformed their little piece of the world into a major financial and trade center. It's also a very diverse country culturally and linguistically. They speak Singlish here, a unique blend of English, Malay, Mandarin Chinese, and other dialects. Talk about confusing. One above. I'm not just shook, I'm shiyuk. <laughs> Singapore is also a global leader in urban planning and sustainability and boasts many extensive green spaces, vertical gardens, and public transportation to reduce reliance on cars. I think we can all learn a thing or two from Singapore, as their GDP per capita sits at 72,640 and they have an unemployment rate of only 2.1%. Reminds me of the B movie that came out back in 2007. Man, has it already been that long? Great. I see that makes me feel old. Time flies, or should I say buzzes by. Number seven. The Netherlands. Even if everything about the Netherlands doesn't convince you to move there, it's definitely a place you should visit at least once in your life. Trust me, it's a fascinating and comforting place. I'll show you some places you can't miss in a minute. With a population of close to 18 million spread across just 16,000 square miles of land and sea, the Dutch have clearly mastered the art of making the most of tight spaces. They also have a high population density, but what's truly fascinating about this country is the fact that 26% of it is below sea level. With a high propensity to flooding, the Netherlands have worked tirelessly to engineer better canals and dikes with the adoption of modern engineering and construction technologies. And money certainly isn't an issue, considering the Netherlands rocks an impressive 59,000 GDP per capita. That economic muscle powers Dutch leadership across industries like agriculture, energy, finance, and transportation. Speaking of transportation, the Dutch are well known for cycling, they bike more than any other nation in the world, averaging 560 miles a year per person. The Dutch have a high ranking in government effectiveness, human development, and happiness. This has led to some of the most amazing inventions, like the self-driving bike, cutting-edge windmills, and human plant communication, developed in partnership with Google and coming April 1st. What is the meaning of my existence? All right, of course, you know that's just a joke, but if you do come to the Netherlands, be sure to stop by and visit the Anne Frank House and the Van Gogh Museum. Number six, New Zealand. In the lands of Middle Earth, legend tells of the Dark Lord Sauron and the ring that would give him the power to enslave the world. Wait, wait, that's just fantasy. Yes, but some of the best fantasy of all time. You may be wondering, what this has to do with New Zealand, but if you're anything like me who grew up reading the Lord of the Rings trilogy and watching the movies by Peter Jackson, you probably remember that they were filmed entirely in New Zealand. So if you've been to a Lord of the Rings movie marathon with your friends, <laughs> you've undoubtedly seen much of New Zealand already and can attest to its absolutely stunning landscape. The 5.3 million people that live here are some of the most peaceful people on Earth ranking fourth on the Global Peace Index, and are affectionately known as Kiwis, a nickname coined first to the soldiers during World War I, but later attributed to all New Zealanders. Pretty cool to be nicknamed after your national symbol. I know a bunch of Americans would love to be known as Eagles. Well, mostly in and around Philadelphia. Some of the things that make the Kiwis stand out is their unemployment rate of only 1.4%. And the literacy rate is right at 99%. Between you and me, it would probably be at 100, but I'm guessing there's a few people that failed to read this sign. Kitanatahu. Number five, Ireland. Ah, the Irish. Never have there been a people more proud of their heritage than the Irish. I'd be one of them too. All right, enough with the accent. Apparently it's enough to make some people I know cringe. Do you agree? If you want to rate my accent on a scale of one to 10, go ahead and leave a comment below. The culture of Ireland is one that is undoubtedly known and loved worldwide. Almost every country in the world celebrates St. Patrick's Day on some level, and 62% of Americans do every year. In fact, there are more Irish descendants in the United States than there are in all of Ireland, since many of them immigrated to the United States over the years. But maybe Ireland is calling you home. Not only is the potato famine long forgotten history, the economy is absolutely exploding. Because of their low corporate tax rates, companies like Google, Meta, Microsoft, and Apple have placed their European headquarters in Dublin, creating jobs and economic opportunities for many people. With just over 5 million residents, they boast a strong GDP of 104,000 per capita, 
and a 99% literacy rate giving millions peace of mind. They also don't get into many conflicts with other nations or themselves. That places them third on the Global Peace Index. The music, the dancing, the Irish pubs all tell many tales of history and life in this great country that can only be experienced firsthand. Number 4. Finland Another cold country far to the north with about 5.5 million people. Man, that must be the golden criteria for happiness and success. Finland used to be part of Sweden for centuries before gaining independence in 1917, and of course was immediately swept into both world wars, vigorously defending its independence, which played a large role in shaping their national identity and foreign policy. By adopting a policy of neutrality during the Cold War, Finland was able to become prosperous and innovative. Aside from their political standings, their role in technological advancements like the engineering of mobile phones, starting with Nokia, man, that sure takes me back, have played an important role in bringing Finland to the top economically. They also boast a literacy rate of 100% and came out on top as the happiest country in the world. You might be thinking it has something to do with all those lakes and endless water activities. I mean, they do have 187,000 of them. But no, I think the land of a thousand lakes has something else that makes them the happiest country in the world. Coffee. Yep, Finnish people drink more coffee per person than any other country. That's about 1,500 cups of coffee a year. There's just no time to come off that coffee high. No wonder they're so happy. I wonder where they would rank though without their four cups of coffee a day. My coffee needs are just as important as yours. What was that all about? Terry, I try not to judge people, so I wouldn't know. Number three, Switzerland. Of course, this country should be obvious. Switzerland has been an independent country since the medieval times and has remained neutral in every war since the time of Napoleon. They adopted a policy of permanent armed neutrality and have pledged to avoid major conflicts while serving in many peaceful capacities with organizations like the Red Cross and the United Nations. This has allowed them to be an economic powerhouse and a global center for banking, pharmaceuticals, and other high-valued industries like watchmaking, cheese, and chocolate. Their GDP per capita sits at around 97,420, which is very promising for a country of roughly 9 million people. The quality of life and happiness among the Swiss is some of the highest in the world, which combined bring them almost to the top of our list. They have some of the lowest crime rates and some of the highest gun ownership rates in the world. It's pretty evident that gun ownership among civilians doesn't necessarily lead to violence on its own. No, depression, anger, and other mental issues play a much bigger role. But we know that these problems affect a very small population of the Swiss. Although they are a happy, healthy nation that has pledged to remain neutral, they are prepared for war with a militia and fallout shelters to accommodate even a nuclear disaster. Switzerland should definitely be on the top of any list featuring the best countries in the world. Number 2. Iceland Ah, where do I even begin? I've been to this incredible country twice, once with all my little ones. The land of fire and ice is truly magical and it also boasts the oldest recorded parliament still in existence. Both times I've gone, I contemplated what it would take to just stay there and not return to my homeland. The air is so crisp, the water so fresh. I mean, they have signs explaining to tourists that it's fine to drink the water straight out of the tap because it's so pure, coming from the many glaciers and being filtered through volcanic rock for decades. But Westerners are not used to that and somehow adopted the idea that water needs to be bottled for purity. Iceland is phenomenal. Home to less than 400,000 people, this self-sustaining country has a GDP of 73,467 and a unique geology of volcanoes, glaciers, geysers, hot springs, and waterfalls. No wonder it attracts millions of tourists and scientists year-round. The hot water here is naturally heated from all the volcanic activity beneath the surface. Sheep, cows, and horses graze freely, and the people are so friendly, kind, and relaxed. Life is not a rush in Iceland. The pace is slowed way down, which is undoubtedly one of the reasons why they rank third in happiness and first on the Global Peace Index. There's hardly any crime in Iceland, and get this, not even a single mosquito. One of the weirdest things I remember reading about Iceland before going there is how Icelanders often let their babies sleep outside even in the cold. Back in the States, you'd get hauled off to jail for much less, like letting your kids walk a half a mile back to your own home. This one example shows how different these two lands are 
and how much safer and trusting Iceland is. Before I get to number one, I just want to shout out to all my viewers and subscribers and say thank you. We just reached 500 subscribers and opened up supers and memberships. Supers allow you to say thanks with a one-time payment, and memberships are a way to join, get access to perks. We're in the process of getting that set up right now, but feel free to join anytime. I started this channel to create and encourage my viewers to explore this great world we live in and to support my wife and three kids, soon to be four, while doing what I love. Your support means the world. All right, number one, Denmark. Now, here's a country that was, for the longest time, brutal and violent for centuries. In its infancy, Denmark emerged as a powerful kingdom during the Viking Age and was known for its seafaring raids and exploration and was definitely not the safest country in the world. In fact, Denmark and Sweden hold the world record for the most wars fought between countries, a total of 30 wars since the 15th century. Thankfully, they've been friends since 1809 and Denmark went so far as to remain neutral in the major wars of the 20th century and instead focused on social welfare programs, becoming a leader in social democracy. This country of nearly 6 million people ranks third in quality of life and second in happiness and global peace. Along with the Netherlands, bikes are more popular than cars in Denmark, and there are hardly any hills, so the Danish use them as a primary mode of transportation. In fact, there are more than five times as many bikes than cars. What may shock a lot of people is the exceedingly high tax rates, for some as much as 50% of their income. Although the Danes are happy to pay the taxes because they receive health care, education, and even child care completely covered, we all know that even a good government can eventually become corrupt. I personally believe that if people were educated well enough to manage their own finances, fostered a culture of looking out for one another and trusting each other, and the government taxed their citizens just enough to secure and protect them, it would be an even happier and prosperous society. I guess what Denmark is doing is working, at least for now. Which of these countries would you prefer to live in? Let me know in the comments and be sure to check out this video on the most dangerous countries in the world and why you should not visit, let alone move there, for any reason. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.